today we are going to see how to create Ezreal Slash. Hi, I'm Gabriel Aguiar, currently developing Rabbit's Tail, links below for more. And today I'm gonna show you how to achieve a simplified version of Ezreal Ultimate Ability in Unity, also known as the True Shot Barrage from League of Legends. It's a simple effect to get started with and the cool thing is that you can build on top of that and improve it on your own, make very different variations with these bases that I'm gonna give you. And if you wanna get this project, I made it all available on my Patreons page, links below, where you will also get access to a huge library of visual effects. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. So let's begin by creating an empty game object with right click. We can rename to vfx underscore slash and I'm gonna reset its transform and in here I'm gonna create a particle system or you could also use a vfx graph in case you need help to convert from one to the other. I made this video a while back that may help you. So with this first particle system created we are gonna use it for the slash bright, the bright part of the slash. We are gonna have three layers. On the slash bright we don't need the shape module we want this to spawn in the exact same position and we don't want this to continuously spawn. So let's say the rate over time is zero and add a burst of one particle. It's moving because of the start speed. If we set it to zero, it will stay in the exact same position. The movement itself would eventually come from a script, for example. And down here on the renderer, instead of a billboard for the render mode, we want a mesh. And if I turn on shaded wireframe, as you can see, we have this cube, but it is facing the camera continuously. We can fix that by saying that the render alignment is set to local. This way it will have a fixed angle. Right, so now we need to replace that cube with this mesh. So I'm gonna use Blender to show you how to create one. In here, we wanna start with a clean scene, so I'm gonna delete everything. And with Shift A, we can add a Bezier curve. We can go to the top orthographic view, and we can enter in edit mode with tab. The idea now is to select one of these handles, more specifically this one, and push it more or less around here so we can create this arc. From here, we want to select this Bezier tab on the geometry section. And we want to play with the extrude value. So we essentially have this sheet of paper. A value of around 0 0.5 should do just fine. Now let's get out of edit mode. Let's go to object mode. And up here in object, we want to convert this to a mesh. If we enter again in edit mode with tab, now it's a mesh. And the cool thing is that we can use, for example, Ctrl R to add a few more segments. For example, three segments will do just fine. The idea now is to select the top edge loop and the bottom edge loop. Turn on proportional editing up here. And then you can press G and lock it in the Y axis by pressing Y and push it back here. You can scroll up and down to control the influence of the proportional editing. From here, with the same selection, we want to scale this only on the z-axis. We want to scale this down. You can increase the range of the proportional editing. Now it's beginning to look like a slash. Our next step is to once again go to the top orthographic view by pressing 7 on the numpad and then press Z to see through so we can then select with B only half of the mesh and delete all of the vertices because now on the modifier panel, we can add a mirror. This way we save time. All we gotta do is increase a little bit the merge value. So we can now select with B this edge loop on the center and with G move it only on the X until it's merged. Let's press Z again to go to the shaded view. There's a couple things we can do. Actually, there's a bunch of things you guys can do. The first one I'm noticing is that this is a little bit too stretched. So I'm gonna select this vertice right here and with G push them on the Y. And as you can see, this is open. I'm gonna fix it by selecting this vertice and with S, I'm gonna scale them down on the Z axis to zero, a value of zero. Now it's a matter of selecting these edge loops right here. And again with S and only on the Z axis, scale them down a little bit. I'm gonna do the same more or less in the middle, but essentially you get the idea. You can actually adjust this however you want. Another thing we can do is, for example, this is very straightforward. It's like a cut. So I'm going to select this vertice right here and fix this. That's something you can do as well if you want. So it becomes more arced. And here we go, looking good. 
all we gotta do now is select this and with Control A apply all transforms. And then on this panel right here, we can rename this to slash, for example, tutorial in my case, and then go to file, export as an FBX, navigate to your project folder, and then I'm gonna turn on selected objects. And down here in the apply scalings, I'm gonna say FBX all, rename it and export as an FBX indeed. Back to your project, back to Unity. Now we can go ahead and replace this cube with the slash we just created. Here we go. First thing you will notice, in my case it's facing up, so I'm gonna turn on 3D start rotation and say 90 in the X. Here we go. The second thing you will notice is that if this is supposed to be a slash, we need this edge to be super bright, you know? So what I'm gonna do is open Krita, which is very similar to Photoshop, but it's free. I'm gonna create a new file, it's very simple texture, with 1024 by 1024 pixels. And on an empty layer, I'm gonna select the brush, more specifically the airbrush soft. I'm gonna make sure I have white for the color, opacity at 100. And in the middle, I'm gonna turn on this guide. I'm gonna do exactly a straight line like this. As you can see, it's faded in the edges and bright in the center. I'm actually gonna duplicate this layer now because I want this to be brighter on the center. So with Ctrl T, I'm gonna shrink this only vertically. Here we go. And now if you want first layer, you can decrease the opacity. It doesn't need to be super bright. And that's it. We have our extremely simple texture and we can hide the black background in my case. And very importantly, this should be transparent just like this and exported as a PNG to your project. Back in Unity, as you can see the slash bright, it does have a material, but we cannot edit the texture. We could create a new material and use one of the shaders that already comes with Unity, but guess what? Let's create a URP unlit shader graph that we can rename to simple tutorial in my case and the score unlit. Double click to open it up. And the first thing you want to do is check the graph inspector. You want to turn on allow material override so you can control these settings directly on the material. We can actually already switch opaque to transparent and then add two properties, one for a color and the other one for a text 2D, which is called main text. For the color, so we can control the intensity of the color, let's say it's white and with alpha at 100. Let's drag and drop both of the properties, but for the main texture, we need to sample it. We need to sample a text 2D. From there, we can multiply these two, the color and the RGBA, both are vector fours, and connect it to the base color. And then push another line from this multiply and search for split. We want to split this vector 4 so we can have access to the alpha and connect to the alpha of the fragment function. And then you can press save asset. And now with right click we can create our material from our custom shader. Rename it to slash tutorial for example, 01. And assign the texture we just created, the gradient. And drag and drop this new material to our slash bright. And here we go we have our edge in a super bright mode. If I switch to shade, this is what we have. Of course, you could go back to Crete or Photoshop and for example, with Ctrl T, increase the size of this texture below, export again without the black background as a PNG and it would cover more area of the slash. So as you can see, you can do quite a few interesting things just by playing with the texture itself. I'm gonna leave the one with the smallest edge and now let's say it's a blue color, but as soon as you do it, nothing happens. Essentially because our shader needs to have access to the mesh. It's very simple to do. If we push this back, we can add a vertex color node and multiply these two together and then replace the connections to the split and to the base color. Don't forget to save this and as soon as you do it, your slash now will be blue or any other color that you have selected. The cool thing is that on the material, for example, we can say the intensity and only the intensity is stronger and the slash will become bright. I also have a global volume in my scene, a post-processing effect with bloom, by the way. With this slash bright, now we can duplicate it and call it the slash dark. We want to create some contrast. If you look to a bunch of reference, you will notice that there's always contrast between bright colors and dark colors. The effect becomes more perceptible. 
A black color for the slash dark or a very dark blue should do just fine. We just need now on the render to say that the ordain layer is minus 1, so this is rendered below the slash bright. And then we can push this a little bit back, perhaps even stretch the scale, or actually create a new material, duplicate this one, and use another text that covers more area, just like this. Yeah, perhaps I've increased the scale a little bit too much. But here we go, really nice contrast with just these two particle systems. Let's duplicate once again the slash bright for the slash edge. I'm gonna push it all the way up and push it to the front. And shrink it in the Z and then shrink it in the X. And then I'm gonna choose something that is a little bit more white. So we can have this very bright edge as you can see. And this is just one of many possibilities, one of many examples that I'm giving you. You now have the basis of a slash. And you can adjust these three layers however you want, with different meshes or different textures, and so on. What I'm going to do is select these three slashes and actually stretch them a little bit in the X. So it becomes even more arced. And by the way, you could use this in a looping mode or turn off looping in the three particle systems. And say the lifetime is 2 seconds, for example. And it will live for 2 seconds and then you can fade this out with the color over lifetime. For example, by adding a key here and saying the last one is completely transparent or black and then the slash will fade, as you can see. Another cool and very simple thing we can add to our slash is some stretched particles. It will give the sensation of speed. Right click, new particle system and this time we want to use the shape module. Let's switch the shape to a box. And let me just Play and pause the slashes so we can see their size because for the shape we can turn on these scene tools of the stretched particles and now control this cube, say it's going to be something very flat like this and we can stretch this until we have a shape similar to this one. Now we want this to go backwards and not in front so on the start speed we can say it's random between two constants between something like minus 5 and minus 25 will do just fine. They don't need to live that long, so the lifetime, something like half a second and 0 0.8 should do just fine as well. And now we want them to be stretched, right? So we can turn on 3D start size and say the X is 0 0.05. What will happen is they will always be facing up and we fix them in the renderer. It's a stretched billboard. Here we go. Yeah, they don't need to be that stretched. So I'm going to say the Y is 0 0.5. I'm actually going to say it's random between two constants, between 0 0.01 and 0 0.05 for the X, and then between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 for the Y. And yeah, a bluish color will do just fine as well. As a matter of fact, we can also reuse the shader we created by duplicating one of these slash materials, call it particle, and select the default particle for the main texture. Let's drag and drop this. And here we go, we can now adjust the intensity however we want. Looking good. We can also increase the rate over time to 20. And if we don't want this to be looping, we can turn it off and say the duration of the particle system is 1.8, since the slash lives for 2 seconds, in case you don't want this to loop, of course. Another detail you can add is duplicate these stretched particles, call them dark, and say the start color is black. And here we go, without our character, the cube, in the way. This is how it's looking. The ones that I've shown you in the beginning, the slashes, they have an extra thing, which is these trails right here. I have used the exact same technique that I've shown you on this tutorial. It's a fantastic tutorial with already 200,000 views and you will learn how to create these beautiful trails that you can add to your slash and it will add a really nice touch. I left a link below or somewhere on the screen. And once you add those trails, this is how it looks. They really complement each other very well and then it's a matter of testing different textures, different meshes, different trail types like I did here with all of these variations that I made available on my Patreon page, links below. And by supporting me, you get access to a huge library of visual effects. 
So that's it folks, I wanna say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. And as usual, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, which are Alberto Sageres, Alexi, Alan Alsted, Ben Basso, Daniel Schmidt, David Molina, Diego Marcos, Phoenix, Frosty40, Grub Lab, Jagor Severinsky, Ingward Popov, Ivan Jacobi, Casey Miller, Leon Holt, Matt Moran, Mike Bell, Heitz, Pierre Mayuru, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, RVR, Sean Aguilar, Barry Suta, Wherever Marta, Will Pullion, Vlad, Virginia Seru, Minje Kim, and Sangyan O. Oh, thank you all very much for your support, it's very much appreciated. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you. Bye.